All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about DAX a little bit. Uh, specifically, we're gonna be talking about the SMSL SU9 DAC. I've been using this for, um, I don't know, probably a good month or so I picked it up. Got a pretty good deal on it. And, um, you know, I'm still trying to answer for myself the question of like, how much do DAX matter? So. Um, I'm going to link to another video up here that I did before where I kind of talked about my experience up to this point about DAX and then you could really think of this video as a review of the SMLS, SMSL SU9 but it's also kind of a continuation of that thought process of how much do DAX matter, do DAX matter, that type of thing. So let's dive in, let's see what you get with the SMSL SU9 and uh, yeah, we'll talk about how it sounds and maybe compares to a couple other things. So, uh, I've, it's obviously unboxed and all that already. I, I did figure I'd just, I'd show you the box just in case you're curious real fast. This is typical SMSL packaging. Um, so you got a little sleeve there, you get the box inside and then, you know, you'll have power cord, remote, and the unit in here. So again, already unboxed, but you know, I thought maybe people would be interested or maybe not everybody's seen it. So if you haven't seen what an SMSL product package looks like, that's it. Uh, so not a lot, you know, as far as frills and packaging and things like that, it's pretty basic. We get the unit itself here. It comes with the typical kind of like computer power cable. And um, I don't think this is the cable it came with, but you know, it, it uses the, what is this, USC, USB-B um, cable. It's like a printer cable, basically, is how I think about it. And then you've got the generic, kind of all this chi-fi stuff comes with remotes that are exactly the same. And you know, like these remotes, if you have more than one SMSL, DAC or helping DAC or anything like that like these will one will control them all um so just something to be aware of because if you're trying to like compare a couple side by side you can kind of mess them up if you're if you're using the same remote I don't like to use the remote which is why I actually really like that the SMSL SU9 has like a very nice dial it's a stepped pentometer in it and you know, I, it feels really good. It's one of those systems where like, it, it's also a button that you can push in. Listen to that click, can you hear that? Uh, it's a really nice button and really nice pentometer. I really enjoy using that. Other than that, it's clean on the front. You get a display, um, it reads out, you know, whatever you want it to read out. Uh, it's pretty simple, it's probably not necessary, but you know, if you're scrolling through menus or, or things with the wheel, it, it's it's nice. It's a really nice looking display. You can change the brightness on it to set it to be really bright or lower it way down. That's pretty cool too, in my opinion. On the back here, you see uh, this basically has any input, output you could want on a DAC, I would think. So you've got your power in, you've got an antenna for Bluetooth. I, this is Bluetooth 5.0, so this Bluetooth is, is pretty legit. And, sorry, I got a kitty back here. It's, I don't know what she wants, but we'll see if we can get it taken care of and then we'll come back. You wanna go out? Come on. All right, let's try this again. Um, kitty is kicked out, so. Um, here we go. So yeah, Bluetooth 5.0, good Bluetooth in it. Optical, the USB port there, coax, balanced out, single ended out. So it's just all in all, it's a very clean, sleek unit. I really like the design. I have uh, really zero, zero issues with the, with the design of this uh, unit here. So. Um, with that being said, let's not belabor it and let's get into sound. So uh, again, this whole thing is about how much do DACs matter? Now this is a nice full featured DAC, no doubt about that. It probably does just about anything you'd want it to do DAC wise. Um, you know, you can get into the menus and you've got all sorts of, of, of filters and sound colors and things like that that you can you can change it. I don't really mess with any of that stuff too much. I mean, I played around with it a little bit, but I really don't think those filters 
I don't know, I do a whole lot of anything to be honest with you. Um, maybe your experience will vary with that, but for me, I didn't see a huge difference. I, I pretty much just like this just because it's clean look. It's got all the features you need on it. And um, I like that it's got the volume control. And I like that I can control the volume on the unit because that just sits on my desk and I don't want to have to use a remote when I'm sitting like a foot away from something. So I much prefer some type of an input to be on there. And that's why I like this mainly over the, the SU-8. Uh, this can be kind of a pricey DAC though. It's almost what, like $450, $460 new. Um, I bought mine for about half that, to be honest with you. And at that price, I really think this is a, a nice DAC if you're looking for a Delta Sigma DAC. Of course, if you're paying full price for this at 460, then you're almost getting into R2R multi-bit territory where maybe there's something else you could find out there that um, you know potentially could have a bit more of a difference. So as far as Delta Sigma DACs go, this is probably my favorite one that I've ever used. And things that I have had on hand, like when I had this, were the SU-8 and the Modi 3 uh, DAC. Now, um, compared to those two DACs, I would say the Modi is a little bit more forward in its presentation. Um, and I'd say the SU-8 just is a little bit looser than the SU-9, just not quite as clean. I really thought the SU-9 sounded um, really, really good. It, it, it's a very detailed sound. Um, and when I compared it also to the built-in DAC of my Odyssey Deckard, I found that out of all those DACs I had, so the SU-8, the Modi 3, the SU-9, and my built-in Odyssey Deckard, I preferred the SU-9 DAC. And I thought that's because it was very clear, very clean, but also the top end was quite, um, how do I want to say this? It was very mellow. Okay, the detail was there, but it was it was a mellow. It wasn't like over sharpened or anything like that. It had kind of like maybe a softer upper end. Not that it was rolled off. It just it just came off really clean and precise, and um, a good amount of air there. It just didn't have it didn't have a bite to it, which is is nice for me. Like I really thought it sounded good. That being said, um, is it a huge leap over? The Modi 3 or the SU-8, I don't think so. Um, again, these are very subtle differences unless you're going right back and forth between them. I don't think it really matters that much to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but that being said, out of any Delta Sigma DAC I've tried, this has been my favorite. So I, I do really like this DAC. Now, here's the asterisk. Again, I said at 460, if you were to pay full price for this, you're you're creeping up into discrete R2R uh, territory. And after a long, long hunt and trying to pick one up at what I thought was a decent price, um, which is pretty far from its asking price, I have finally got my hands on a Bifrost 2 by Shit, and that is their multi-bit or R2R setup. And um, I'm gonna tell you there's a difference. There is a difference. Again, is it huge? Is it night and day? No But I do think the Bifrost has a little more life to it uh, a Little it's more dimensional, you know, it you can just Gosh, it's it's hard to put your finger on it If you had to articulate what it is, which obviously I'm doing a very poor job but there does seem to just be a little more life and natural and fullness and I don't know, there's something about the Bifrost that's, that just sounds really, really good. Again, I'm listening mainly through my Deckard. So, there will be a part three to this series, which is where I will review and talk about the Bifrost after I've had some more time to spend with it, because I really just got it within the last couple of days. So, you can uh, tune in and, you know, subscribe if you want to look forward to that video. But bottom line, um, if we're talking about the SU-9, it's a great DAC, it's a great Delta Sigma DAC. I think if you can pick one up used for, I don't know, $300 or under, I think you're doing pretty well in that regard if you want balanced and Bluetooth and all that stuff. If you don't care about Bluetooth and you don't care about balance, then I would say, you know, look for something 
like the Modi 3 or something along those lines. If you want balance but you don't care about Bluetooth, look at the SU8 or look at the uh, Modius or something along those lines as well. But if you want the Bluetooth and you like the rest of the features and things, um, yeah, I can totally recommend the SU9 as far as that goes. So I think that's going to do it. Um, again, uh, thank you for sticking with me. You know, drop questions, comments, whatever you got down below. I try to check those fairly often. And again, consider subscribing to the channel if you're interested in that Bifrost 2 video, which will be coming up, or if you're just interested in more headphone content, in which case there'll be more of that coming too. So thanks again. Until next time, take care.